In this video, I'm going to show you how you can match and balance your footage perfectly every single time. So we have these three clips and I just created a normal type of node structure here. Let me just reset that. CST, CST. We're going to work in DaVinci White Gamut. This was shot on red. So red to DaVinci. Last CST, DaVinci to Rec. 709. In our contrast node, I'm going to change the pivot just to 0.336 because that is middle gray in DaVinci. And then what I'll do is on my stream deck, I'm just going to copy this thing over, copy it there, paste it there. Just paste, paste, paste. The first step is do a bit of contrast. The reason I do this pivot is the middle gray is 0.33. That's usually where the face is and the contrast kind of moves around it. It's the brightness of the face. So we'll add contrast here a bit. I always use my Omniscope just to double check where the skin tone's lying. And then let's say I'm happy with that. I'd go to the next shot. And theoretically, if I copy over this, Control C, Control V, these two, should be really close and they kind of feel really nice to me but this third clip you can see is very different after you've graded this clip you'd go here now i need to balance the shot i'm actually matching it to this it's like these shots are quite balanced i mean you can see on the vector scope it's not in the middle but i kind of like where it's lying it's a bit more yellow greenish these two look pretty similar if i go back and forth a bit maybe this one is a bit more yellow than this and i'm going to show you how you can tackle it with precision there are different ways to balance your shot or match them common way is using the offset so just the global offset you can use your wheel or on the on the ui itself and then pull it in a direction right you can see the vector scope changing there this is a good way of doing it the tricky part is that if you want to move it really precisely it's quite difficult because you're kind of just using your eye say we go back and forth and you're using your eye kind of like oh, okay this kind of feels right okay so that's one way of doing it another way of doing it let's just reset this is go to your gamma you change it to linear and you use your gain wheel in the same way we use the offset wheel you'll see here the vector is going to change this is also a really nice way nothing wrong with this way it's it's great but it also runs into the problem that if you want to make super minor adjustments, it's tricky. The tool or the method that I like to use is called printer lights. And that might sound foreign to you or like a different type of language. Now let me show you how exactly I use these printer lights. So you see in this offset, right? The first technique is using the bowl of the offset. The printer lights work in the same way, but it's a bit more precise. So if you go up to color and you go down here, you'll see full printer lights, half printer lights, quarter printer lights. A full printer light is this minus one. So it's 24 or actually let's say it starts at 25. So on red and let's reduce it to 24. So we just took one printer light, a full one, full printer light away from red. It's the same for green and it's the same for blue. That adjustment is still pretty big for me. I only use the quarter printer lights. The quarter printer lights, so you have the categories of master, which is all of it, it's global. Red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And you can map these to either your keyboard or your stream deck, and that's how I use it. And I'll show you now, on my stream deck, all of those quarter printer lights are mapped. Red, yellow, magenta, green, cyan, blue, and master. So if I go, let's say, between these two shots, and I can see they're not the same, in my balance node, back and forth, I can see this shot's way more yellow than this shot. Let's just reset this balance real quick. Okay, so either I have to remove yellow or I have to add green to it. So let's start with removing yellow. So I go on my stream deck, yellow minus one, which is a quarter, and you'll see a quarter goes down on red and green, because that's yellow. Down another one, goes 0.5. 0.25. I go back and forth. Okay, I'm going to go back up. See, there's still a difference. I'm going to add green. One, two. Okay, we're getting closer. It's still a bit too yellow. So I go down yellow again. I go up green, yellow, down yellow, green. Now we're getting closer. Now we're getting really close. I can also see they're not really matching because of the brightness itself. So let's just do that before we tinker with the balance a bit more. I'm just going to go back in the contrast. HDR is going to lift my exposure. Just gonna add a bit of contrast here, down with exposure. What I also really like doing is using this tool from Stefan and I go border 
one, two, three, use RGB. And it puts a nice border around my project. And now going back and forth, I can get really, really close with matching. Okay, so what does this need? This needs more green, more green. Oof, that's close. Oh, not there. And I go back and forth. Then I'll make minor adjustments because it's either going to be color or contrast for the matching. A bit of contrast. And now I'm just going with my eye. And then when I'm at a point, I play this through and just see if it feels good. Yeah, that feels right to me. And after you've balanced or matched your shots, you just pretty much do the same process with all of your clips. So I'll go back and forth on this a bit. After a project, I'll go outside, reset my eyes, come back and just make sure that the balance is correct. I might still tweak a little bit here and there with the quarter printer lights. And then once I'm happy, I just have to remember to turn this DCTL off and then export and I am done.